Hey, good evening, everybody. Lawrence Michael, Operations Manager with Air Quality Remediation, making another kind of tutorial video. Uh, this video will be about how we select how many HEPA air scrubbers we need for any individual type of remediation or restoration project. Uh, we've been asked a couple times, you know, to uh, go into how we figure out how many air scrubbers we need. Um, CFMs, air changes per hour, things like that, because I've, I've kind of touched on it in other videos. So I want to just kind of go ahead and do a quick breakdown of how we figure that out. Uh, if anybody out there uh, has a remediation company uh, or is just curious to know how this equation is done, this will be for you guys, uh, as well as any uh, customer who's having remediation or restoration jobs done in their home or their office or you know some type of commercial space, they'll be able to say, okay, well, you know, based on the cubic footage of this area, we should have this many air scrubbers. Um, there's a lot of different names for air scrubbers in the industry, uh, air scrubbers, negative air machines, air filtration devices, uh, HEPA collectors. I mean, there's all different kinds of names for these pieces of equipment that all do the same thing. Uh, basically, what it what the machine is doing will determine what it's called. So they're all HEPA air scrubbers. Uh, a HEPA air scrubber that's just filtering out the air inside of a space could be an AFD. It could be an air filtration device, but it's not a negative air machine until it's been ducted, you know, outside a window or outside a door or something like that. So now it's creating negative air pressure. So now it's a negative air machine, even though it's the exact same machine. Uh, if you're doing duct cleaning, uh, you know, if you're NADCA certified to do air duct cleaning, uh, we use HEPA collectors to control airflow, uh, create negative air pressure, but that would be, you know, a HEPA collector. So they're, like I said, they're all the same thing. They're all HEPA vacuums. Uh, they just filter out uh, the air down to 0.3 microns, you know, that 99.97%, that HEPA standard that I've talked about a number of times. So made a little cheat sheet here so we're gonna we're gonna go through and look at this cheat sheet so the number of hep air scrubbers required for any space so we talked about air changes per hour so that's ach uh, the iicrc standard so the s520 mold remediation standard as well as asbestos standards um lead standards, silica dust standards, they are all pretty much the same. They're all between four and 12 air changes per hour with a minimum of four. So you have to have a minimum of four air changes per hour for mold and asbestos. Um, this is coming right from the IICRC's S520 mold remediation standard. This is it's a free standard to see the old, uh, like 2002, 2004 standard. Uh, they have revised the standard a number of times. This is now 2022, but the older standards that are still, still relevant, they haven't changed a ton about the standard, uh, is a free standard. If you want the newest, you know, 2021, 2022 volume, it does cost some money and they do send you, you know, uh, an actual paper copy of the remediation standard as well as a usb and, and cd so that way you can have it online and on your computer so you can make copies of it that way so if anybody wants a standard you can just google it to get the older standard or pay for the new standard but again they all say a minimum of four air changes per hour we touched on what a nam is a negative air machine uh, which is also an afd so a NAM, a negative error machine, is an AFD, but an AFD is not a NAM. So you can see where people may get confused with all the different terminology that uh, remediation and restoration companies, you know, throw around. <clears throat> but you, you can know that they're all AFDs, they're all air scrubbers, they all do the same thing. So the equation for figuring out how many air scrubbers you need, how many negative air machines you need, is based on the CFM required, so the cubic feet per minute required. Everything, air scrubbers, negative air machines, HEPA collectors, HEPA vacuums, air movers, all these different things in the industry are all based on CFM, so cubic feet per minute. How, much, how, how many cubic feet of air does this piece of equipment move in a minute? So to figure out how many cubic feet 
per minute you need for a given space, a given contaminated area. It's the room volume, so the cubic footage, times the number of air changes, which is at least four, the minimum of four, divided by 60 minutes, 60 minutes in an hour, because this is based on cubic feet per minute, we need to figure out per hour, because these are air changes per hour. So we need to convert hours to minutes, so we do that by dividing 60 minutes. We touched on um, air filtration devices, and CFM, so uh, in one of our last videos that I'll annotate, you know, up here, we talked about how we were cleaning and testing a HEPA 500 air scrubber. So uh, that does 500 CFMs, so 500 cubic feet per minute. Uh, there's HEPA 1000s, 1500s, 2000s, all the way up to, I believe, 5000 is the biggest. But, um, and, and thinking about it now, uh, air conditioning units are all... Uh, standardized on cubic feet per minute as well so if there's any hvac companies out there it's the same exact thing they're they're measured in cfms um if a air scrubber says that it's a hepa 500 or 1000 or whatever the number is that's not the exact amount of cfms that are actually coming out of the discharge of the machine especially when you have that machine ducted out a window or a door to create negative air pressure the machine will do 500 CFMs if it's rated at 500 CFMs. However, after the air passes through a, a pre-filter and a secondary filter and then the HEPA filter and then goes through the ductwork and out the window or out the door, you're not making 500 CFMs out the door or out the window at that point. It has to use that power to get through the filters, at, through the ductwork, things like that. So there is a reduction you can test that reduction with a uh, error meter. It'll tell you exactly how many CFMs are going over top of this meter. Typically, I like to use 80%. So if a uh, HEPA air scrubber, a 1500, so a, a HEPA 1500 air scrubber, if it's rated at 1500, by the time it makes it out the door window, it's probably about 80% of that. So it's probably about 1200, 1300 CFM, somewhere around there. But again, you can test it. But based on the uh, equation that we're going to be doing here, just as a, a quick once through, you know, don't worry about the reduction because that all can be tested. We're just trying, I'm just trying to teach you guys how it's done to figure it out. And then once you figure out what your reduction is, then you can, you know, do the equation again based on the actual CFM that is coming out of the discharge of the machine. So just wanted to put that caveat in there. So I put a little cheat sheet together. Uh, if anybody wants to pause the video, make copies of this, uh, you certainly can. I'll try to put it down in the comments below so that way you guys have it. Pop-ups. If, um, if you want to be able to use this equation until you guys get used to figuring it out on your own or if you just want to use the cheat sheet, that's perfectly fine. So the number of HEPA air scrubbers or AFDs, air filtration devices or negative air machines, depending on who you're talking to, required equation so cubic footage so the room volume cubic footage is is always length times width times height so you would take your length times your width times your height which equals your room vo room volume you put that right here times the number of air changes per hour again we talked about a minimum of four so right here would have to be four or higher somewhere between four and twelve so then you put that number down here. So whatever your room volume was, your cubic footage, times four or higher, right here, you put that number. You take that number, divide it by 60 minutes, and that's your CFM required. So you put that number right here. Put that same number right here, CFM required. The same number you got here by walking through this equation. Is that CFM required right here? Is this number equal to or less than the amount of CFMs that are coming out of your AFD. So say you got a thousand here, your, your CFMs required for this space is a thousand. Is it equal to or less than a 1500 air scrubber that we were talking about in the example earlier? Well, yes, it's equal to or less than 1500. So you're good. You have more than the minimum required for changes for air changes per hour as outlined in that IICRC's S520 motor mediation standard, as well as abatement standards and everything we talked about. 
if that number is greater than the amount of CFMs that are coming out of your AFD, then you need more AFDs or bigger AFDs. And you can do this same equation to figure out, you know, any cubic footage area that you're working in, any contaminated area, and you just plug in the numbers, you plug in your CFMs that are coming out of your AFD, regardless of how big it is, and you're able to figure out whether you meet that minimum for air changes per hour standard. Um, it's pretty simple, pretty straightforward. Um, if we wanted to, I guess we could kind of play around. So we take a calculator here. Let's just say, say the room was 40 by 40 by 10. That's a, you know, that's a reasonable room. So 40 length times 40 width times 10 height gives us 16,000 cubic footage. So we would put 16,000 right here times the number of air changes. So let's say four. So we'll say times four air changes per hour is 64,000. We would put 64,000 right here divided by, because remember we're in hours here, we need to be in minutes. So we're going to divide by 60. So divide by 60 minutes in an hour. And then our CFM required, we would put the same number here and here. CFM required is 1066.66666. So we round up, so call, so call it 1067. So is 1067, we could put 1067 here as well, is 1067 equal to or less than the AFD that you're using? In this case, we've been you know talking about a 1500. So yes, 1067 is less than 1500. And if you wanted to, you could play with that equation and say, okay, well, how many air changes per hour are we getting out of that 1500? So we would we could say 40 times 40 times 10, the length times width times height equals the 16,000 cubic footage times, let's say six air changes per hour. That's 96,000, we would put 96,000 right here, divided by 60. 60 minutes in an hour, we're at 1,600. So our HEPA air scrubber that we've been talking about does 1,500, we would put 1,600 here. So no, we're not meeting six air changes per hour. We're up over five though, for sure. And I won't waste your time doing the equation for five because I know it's more than five, but that's how you would figure out how many air scrubbers you need for any given space. Uh, the equation to figure out your cubic uh, feet uh, per minute requirement for that given space. Um, I think that's about all I wanted to touch on. Yeah, so, and again, uh, if, if anybody out there has an air meter, you can, like I said, measure the reduction that you're, you're getting through those filters and out that ductwork and then use that as your CFM for your machine instead of the rated 1500, 1500, whatever it is rated for because there will be a reduction. And then you do the same equation to figure out if you're higher and if you aren't high enough. If you don't have enough air changes per hour, just add more air scrubbers. I mean, it, it's pretty simple. It's not rocket science by any means. Uh, there's plenty of people out there that are way smarter than us. So I'm just breaking it down for the people that either just started a remediation company or just want to learn about it. Or again, homeowners or potential customers that are having remediation and restoration services done to be able to check themselves. Hey, you know, to eliminate this cross-contamination concern of these, you know, potentially hazardous materials, is there enough air changes per hour going on in here? And I mean, it would be real simple for a homeowner to say, okay, well, I know my room volume is blah, 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 because I know it's this by this by this. We want to have a minimum of four air changes per hour. We divide it by 60 minutes. Okay, and what size machines are they using? It, it, it's pretty easy to figure out whether uh, the company is, you know, adhering to that air changes per hour standard to eliminate that cross-contamination concern. So uh, this video has ran way longer than I anticipated it to run. Um, I know by the analytics on uh, the YouTube videos, you know, uh, on YouTube's, you know, content page that uh, I typically lose viewers at like two to five minutes. So this one's at 15. So I'm sure I'm going to lose a lot of you. Um, I like to get into the minutia of things. I like to, you know, show you guys how everything's done. Again, that transparency that we talk about in all of our videos. So I'm just going to end that there. I appreciate everybody watching. 
Uh, thank you for, you know, your time. I know time's the most important thing. If anybody has any video ideas, definitely put them down in the comments. And we'll see you on the next video.